Mike, you know, they, uh, uh, as I was saying a minute ago, uh, they had more damage on pad 19, actually this time, more serious damage than they've had in any launch, including Gemini 1, when they bent one of the umbilical tower booms. Uh, but uh, as one of the launch directors said, God was with us. None of the damage was vital to Gemini 6 flight. Uh, if it had been another Gemini 7 or that configuration, they couldn't have gone in anything like this amount of time. The hydraulic line, for instance, uh, I mean the uh, hydrogen line, which has to uh, fuel, uh, fuel up the fuel cell hydrogen, was severed by the blast and also was the main electrical conduit. But they were able to patch around that electrical conduit until they could repair it. Uh, Walter, the, uh, some people have asked why there is only one pad that a Gemini flight can go out of here at Cape Kennedy. Now, for instance, the Air Force on pad 40 and 41 here hoped to send up flights maybe as many as 40 a year. But this is just like one rifle, and, and uh, there's a specially configured bullet, which is the Gemini Titan, which, can, which is the reason that only one can go out of pad 19. It uh, worries me that... Uh that they are so quick to replace a computer simply because of a faulty memory. I hope they're tougher on machines than they are on men, or I know who's going to be the first to go around here. I can't remember why, though. <laughs> now, CBS News coverage of Gemini 7 will continue in a moment. What have we got against colds? Over 600 tiny time pills in a contact capsule that work up to 12 full hours. Each one smaller than the head of a pin. Yet if you have a cold, a tiny contact time pill like this could help stop a sniffle minutes from now or help you breathe freely up to 12 hours from now. Other contact time pills check sneezes, clear your stuffy nose, Many contact time pills work fast for fast relief. Many work later for continuous relief. Put more than 600 of these tiny time pills together in one capsule, and it's easy to see why contact is so remarkably effective. All day or all night. What have we got against colds? The good medicine in contact. Today's largest selling cold medication at your pharmacy. Back at CBS News Space Center, and we uh, should be eight minutes from the launch of Gemini 6. The count is T minus three and holding a deliberate built-in hold. The hold should last another five minutes, pick up in five minutes, and the launch in eight minutes. We're expecting an announcement now from the voice of Gemini Control in Houston, Paul Haney. Gemini Control Houston here at 187 hours, 16 minutes into the flight of seven. The Guaymas, the Texas Capcom down at Corpus Christi has just advised Seven that he is going on the ground. They need not acknowledge, and it's uh, we just don't know whether they will or not. Let's tune in there as they swing over Houston and try to see what if there is any conversation. Gemini 7, Borman and Lovell, 
up over the western coast of Mexico asking how things are going to be uh, for the Gemini 6 launch. The story that they're getting is that everything is go for the launch. By the time they come around again, Gemini 6 will have been launched and will be in hot pursuit. Will be considerable miles behind Gemini them. Control at Houston here again. Two fairly quiet astronauts this morning who are expecting two visitors very shortly. Let's go down the cave now and find out what what's doing with spacecraft six. Four and six seconds for the liftoff of Gemini 6. We've just had a final status check prior to resuming the count. All elements checked in as go. Wally Shira, the command pilot of Gemini 6, checked in as fueled up and ready to trot. We're now just a few minutes away from resuming the count. We're still at T-minus three minutes and holding, all looking well at Launch Complex 19. This is Gemini Launch Control. That count should be resumed in about two and a half minutes, a 25-minute hold built into the count to enable any last-minute uh, corrections that had to be made to be sure they get off on the precise second. They second-by-second second timing being so important to rendezvous at some 17,500 miles an hour. As Gemini 6 blasts off in a scheduled four minutes from now, they should be uh, around 1,200 miles behind uh, Gemini 7 as they, uh, Gemini 6 is inserted into orbit and begins its pursuit of Gemini 7. Gemini 7 itself now is now just about approaching the uh, Cape on uh, its 117th orbit. It itself is some uh, two and a half, three hours, three and a half hours away from a new uh, space record and all is going well in 7. A minor trouble with a fuel cell stack apparently has corrected itself and everything is working to perfection on the 7. They have even partially accomplished uh, one of the most uh, exciting uh, novel of their experiments. They did see, for the first time after six days of frustration, a laser beam from Hawaii last night. And now an this announcement from Jack King. control at the Cape, now some 10 seconds away from resuming the count at T-minus three minutes on the Gemini 6 mission. Coming up shortly, Mark. We're at T-minus three minutes and counting. T-minus three on the Gemini 6 mission. All looking good at the present time. We've gone through a complete checklist once again, and we are counting, leading up to a launch just a short while from now. This is Gemini Launch Control at the Cape. And 42-year-old uh, Navy Captain Wally Shira, 35-year-old Air Force Major Tom Stafford sit there in their Gemini spacecraft for the uh, second time after being frustrated October 25th. They're now in hopes of being launched in less than two and a half minutes from now to pursue Gemini 7 in the heavens. Announcement from Bernard Eisman aboard the USS Wasp. Well, look something like this but the carrier will be in a different position from the one we're in now. It'll be about 450 miles south of Bermuda, and we'll have 11 planes in the air for command, for tracking, for search, and primarily for recovery, of course. And now on the flight deck is my colleague Bernard Eisman. Bernie, what's the situation down there? Well, down here, Dallas, the flight deck, of course, is bare of the recovery aircraft that took off this morning. But tomorrow, there'll be action here. The backup aircraft will have been winding up on the deck all the time that the recovery operation is in effect. The doctors in the sick bay will also be standing by. This is Bernard Eisman with Dallas Townsend aboard the Wasp. Minus nine and a half minutes. Channel power. Minus nine and a half minutes. One minute, 20 seconds. Minus one minute seconds. and 20 seconds. As we lead up to the final moments of launch, to repeat an earlier announcement, we will have ignition at zero and some three seconds after ignition, the launch vehicle will lift off on the start of the Gemini 6 flight. T 
T minus 60 seconds and counting. T minus 60. T minus 50. Astronaut Sherrard making some final comm checks. T minus 40 seconds and counting. During the final 10 seconds of the count, astronaut Alan Bean will give the count to the astronauts in the spacecraft. T minus 30. T minus 25 seconds and counting. The pre valves on the launch vehicle have been opened. This permits the propellants to come down just above the thrust chamber. T minus 15 seconds and counting. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We've got a shutdown. No lift off. The engines have shut down. Fuel pressure is lowering, Wally Shiraz says. Apparently in safe condition. Yeah, fuel pressure down about 32. We're watching the fuel pressure lower very carefully. There will be no launch. A critical moment now, getting the fuel pressure down. Oxidizer pressure lowering nicely. Blockhouse is asking for a readout on all tank pressures. Any malfunction that would have kept the ship from getting into orbit would have caused those engines to shut down on the pad and something did occur immediately after ignition as you saw the engines simply burst once and then shut down an automatic shutdown Elliot C is putting in a call to seven to advise them that we will not have a lift off Frank Mormon says Roger we saw it we saw it light up we saw it shut down by golly, Gemini 7 up there above the Cape saw what we saw here, of course, at 185 miles distance. He assures uh, Frank Borman that everything's still okay on the ground here, and we'll keep him advised. All safety features have been built into these rockets, of course, but once you have an ignition like that, and fuel has begun to pour into the thrust chambers, and have, there is a shutdown, there is always danger and concern until the fuel pressure has been brought back to normal, until the, it is sure that the valves are cleared of fuel coming down into the combustion chamber, uh, there will be uh, some concern, crossed fingers. And then, of course, Shiraz and uh, Tom Stafford and Wally Shira talking now about what they saw at the moment of ignition and then how they saw the various pressure gauges and dials start, start dropping just as we did here in Houston and as I'm sure they did in the blockhouse. This is of course the first time that this has happened in our manned space this program. The shutdown would have come before 1.6 seconds. It's approximately at that point where we reach 77% of a full thrust and beyond that point uh, an on the pad shutdown is not possible. We have not had this in the Mercury nor the Gemini program. A lot of unmanned vehicles have had shutdowns on the pad. It's not an unheard of thing in our missile program, but it is unprecedented in the manned space program and causes this concern. Of course, Shiraz and uh, Stafford, who were thwarted in their flight October 25th, have been uh, thwarted Very quickly, again. On there are two the theories flight. here on what caused the shutdown. One, it was an automatic switchover, which is a condition that automatically shuts down the engine. That is a guidance switchover from primary to secondary guidance. This can occur in the first second and a half and cut the engines down. Another theory is there was some erratic behavior in the uh, hydraulic. Uh, hydraulic lines in the primary or the secondary, which could have also caused an immediate shutdown. <laughs>